So um, I also wanted to talk to you about, I uh, wrote a note here. You, I noticed that on your website, you also teach or help people with twin flames, twin soul, that type of connection. Can you share a little bit about that? Right. So most people think that you only have one twin flame, but that's not true because our souls are so vast that, um, I, I, I like to describe it like, uh, the sun, like imagine your soul is like the sun, a, a ray of light can come and down and in, inhabit in one body. Another ray of light can come down and we can't quantify this. Nobody can say how many, uh, how many, incarnations a soul decides to have so i like to i'm going on tangents here but i think it's important that during the time of jesus for example a lot of us are here who remember we remember who we were and there could be you know a thousand or ten thousand mary magdalene's or you know people other characters in that family of light that that are incarnated now but fragments so if there's a massive soul there can be many embodiments many soul aspects um that are incarnated simultaneously and so i have a very unique situation because i i i am one of about eight that i know personally of my soul and um it i met my first twin flame in 2012 and um and i didn't know what twin flames were but interestingly enough twin flames and i didn't know the term but they had been coming to me to my hypnotherapy and healing practice for several years they uh twin flames are magnetized to me i don't know why but maybe because i'm just meant to work with them and i do work with them so they started coming to me the same kind of devastating stories of meeting someone who is you feel that this soul resonance of like a, a oneness where you you feel like that that is my soul in another body and if you can imagine the way i describe it as we don't really know the pain of the of being separated from god so if we're in oneness with god and we're in that love and light and home feeling we don't know the pain of the separation of separating out from that and then being born into this world. I mean, we can, we have, you know, it's not easy being born on earth and living life on earth, being, feeling separate from that, but we don't have the knowing unless you've had an NDE, which I haven't, but that where you're back, you're submerged back into that oneness and that love, and you want to stay there because it's home and it's indescribable how much love and oneness there is but that when you come back here it's devastating because you're not there and you're here and it feels separate and it's so the i liken it to the same thing of the twin flame separation so you meet that other person who embodies your soul energy another aspect of your soul energy and because you're not one anymore you you are as soon as you meet them you go into this devastation of the dark night of the soul and it's horrendous it's torture and every twin flame feels this but they at the same time they feel this ecstatic love the the indescribable ecstatic love because that's home it's like being home with god but really it's your soul but what's the difference and so you're so the twin flame um connection is very intense and and because of that closeness of the soul uh it's one soul uh it brings up all of your stuff like every single shadow aspect every unhealed wound and trauma and it all comes to the surface so it feels like absolute hell and torture and so you've got hell you've got torture you've got dark night of the soul and you have that separation from god or your uh, your soul and and you have ecstatic love and you have intensity with that other being so there's nothing easy about navigating that and i had so i met my first one in 2012 but i have met others and so i met the second one in 2014 and I, so I had to have this repeat of this, what I've just explained to you. And, and I was never romantically involved with any of my twin flames, but it doesn't matter. I mean, 
that would add a level of intensity to it, but right. I you still experience all these things. Now, the one that I met who was the woman who had the life between lives and our soul said to us, you've been the same person in 21 lifetimes. I still consider that a twin flame, but because it's another soul aspect. So that's the language we use to describe. I say soul extension in that case, because we don't have any intensity. We don't have any romantic connection. We're both heterosexual females. We just became very good friends and never had an issue between us. But our connection was, oh my God, same, 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 me too, me too, me too, with every thought and feeling and thing we would go through with life, literal, like literal twins. And so my experience with my twin flames has been so broad and expansive and interesting because I've had the romantic feeling kind uh, without being involved with that, the the men. And then I had a very interesting, in 2015, I was crying because I missed, I, I wasn't with my twin flame and I was sad and I was like devastated and, and probably like praying and trying to ask God for help. And God said, I don't have these voices in my head that happen very often in my life, but God said to me, um, your twin flame is coming. He's going to be, he, your twin flame is coming in another body. He's going to be a walk-in. And so I actually made a video on my YouTube channel. I, it's not public anymore because the my one twin flame didn't feel comfortable with me talking about it openly. I said, nobody knows who you are. He said, it doesn't matter. I know, I know. And I, he said, please take it down. So I took it down for, you know, to respect him. But the, the, the thing that happened was that I, I made a video saying, God told me my twin flame is coming in another body. He's going to be a walk-in. Well, that was in 2015. I made the video that year. In the end of 2020, I met someone who, well, the first phone conversation we had was eight hours long, and it was our, our entire life stories that were matching up and the same, and everything was the same. Just like my friend was, oh my God, me too, me too, same, 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 everything. And so I was thinking in my mind, based on everything he said, like, I kept saying, how can he be the same person as the other twin flame? And I kept saying, how can he be the same person? And this went on. We talked for hours every day. And we and we would say to each other, we're like the same person. We're twins every day. We're twins. We're twins. And finally, I thought, you know what? I had that message. Let me watch that video that I made for you on YouTube. And I rewatched it and I looked at the date and it was in 2015. But this man that I was talking to present day, he told me in our very first phone conversation, he had a walk-in in 2015. <laughs> so I said, wait a second. I, ma I made this video in 2015. I got this message in 2015. This is him. It's him. So I sent him the video. I said, this is you. You're, we're twin flames. You, you had your walk-in in 2015. And he... He didn't deny it. He's like, yeah, I mean, you, you don't, <laughs> yeah, that's, we, that's what we are. So, and we were just friends also, we didn't have a romantic relationship. So anyway, that's my twin flame story. There are many others, I, many others, meaning I told you I was like one of about eight of us. So there are other people in our group that I know all of them. And I, I don't think it'll matter. The names, all right, I'm not even going to name the names, but I will say this. I'm Stephanie, but the, there are derivations of the name Stephanie that are in the male version. Mm -hmm. and three of them are variations of the name Stephanie in the male. There are, you can say it in a different way and spell it in a different way. And so we, in our group, have, four of us have the same name. Wow. And are they are they aware are, are the other yes ones? okay okay yeah yes um so far absolutely all of us have had the conversation and we all many have met each other wow that's yes. amazing 
I love that. I hadn't heard of that uh, perspective on twin flames um, as having more than twin flames. What I've remembered or learned was that we have a lot of soulmates and then the yeah. twin flame is a higher frequency of the soulmate and then the twin ray, um, which what I understand is the epitome, but that makes, I mean, yeah, that's definitely another um, perspective that makes sense too. Yeah. It's so rare. I think most humans don't have the, what I have going yeah. on here. Most just have one or maybe not, none that are incarnated or they meet just one, right. but I don't know why I've had this experience, but I work with twin flames. Like I said, they, they started coming to me in 2008. I didn't know what they were. And then it, the craziest thing is they keep coming to me even. Yes, of course it's on my website. Yes. I have a YouTube channel and it's out there that I work with twin flames, but something else happens, which is people who don't know that I do that they come to me with the same stories. They turn out to be twin flames over and over and over again. You know, just mm -hmm. they, my soul must be directing people to me for, to work with them because right. I understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. That, uh, and I believe that that's what happens with our, you know, when we work with people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, um, did you have a twin flame experience yourself? I do. Um, I have, um, I have a relationship here who is a soulmate. I have a twin flame on the other side. Yeah. And, um, I have his voice on recorder and everything. So yes. It's, and it, it's just a higher frequency of who I have here. The way I, yeah, it's, um, I, yes. Right. I know people who, um, have, who have their twin flame on the other side. And there's a lot of telepathic communication to the point. And this is an interesting thing that happened to me once is someone reached out to me and her, because, um, and I don't know if she knew that I worked with twin flames at all. I don't know, but she messaged me and she said her twin flame is Prince. And that, you know, he was having a lot of communication with her and experiences with her. So that was interesting too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't doubt that, um, like you said, that we have lots of aspects, soul aspects. If we, if we are in, in alignment or in a soul stream, of, uh, cause I believe I'm in the soul stream, Mary Magdalene's soul stream and Yeshua. Anna, that soul stream, Mother Mary, that soul stream, then, um, then you can, like you said, we can have lots of aspects of what we might call a twin flame or, or, um, uh, dedicated, a dedicated frequency between us where we made that agreement to work together in some way and, yes. uh, and be very close knit, like an inner, a uh, inner circle soul group type of thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cause, um, I find that with the work I, for, with me and, um, with people that I've done with people as well is that, uh, personally, I can attest to the fact that during my meditations and my healing work, Yeshua helped me with during my quickening a long time ago and still does, but, um, that the people that the person, especially one in particular who I remembered um, the experiences with him as a child that the most challenging experiences we have with someone are the ones that we're closest to right and have the most and when I remembered that with Yeshua's help I felt this amazing unconditional love from him even though from the human perspective we would see it as a negative experience you know, wow. abuse, abuse yeah. and that kind of thing. But I felt as soon as I got past that and, and moved into that, that space of our agreement together and seeing things on a much um, higher perspective, holographically and higher perspective of the choices we made and, and, you know, life between lives and Michael Newton's work and everything in your work with that, then I realized, oh my gosh, I don't have to forgive anything. There's no forgiveness to be had we made this agreement together and now 
now that I'm aware of it and can bring it into the my oversoul and my higher self, this experience, we're both released from it. And he can go on and do whatever, move up in frequency because he kept coming back as a bad guy. And I was the victim, you know? And so we can move on from that and he can work on his soul growth now. Oh my gosh, that's miraculous. Yeah. And it's hard to get there um, while we're in a human body. But to get to that level of awareness and that level of forgiveness or not needing to forgive anything mm -hmm. is huge because usually we do that on the other side and resolve it. But you have done it while you're still living in this body. Yes. With and I did that. Yeshua. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I did have had one. Ex I had an experience like that with my father and I wrote about it in this book, women living in alignment. My chapter, I talk about the spiritual experience of meeting with his soul on the other side in 2000, he was still alive. Mm -hmm. And, um, we met, he didn't abuse me or anything, but he was more of a emotionally unavailable father workaholic, just focusing on his work, but that we had this healing happen on the other side where there was nothing to forgive. And we had just unconditional love between us. And two months later, uh, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer and he died five months after that. So really it was orchestrated in such a, at a, such a time where I could, we could heal fully as souls mm -hmm. and I could just rush home, drop my whole life, go home and take care of him while he died. Um, wow. and so you, you're explaining a very, the same thing, same, yeah, kind of same, same concept, same, I, um, healing type of healing, healing the soul and the, and understanding those experiences. And that's what I believe that we're here to do is remember why we choose these experiences and that we do choose these experiences. <laughs> I think that, yes. And I think that the more we can do that while we're in our body and alive, the yes. less we need, I don't know if like the, the rules about we need to come back or not come back, but we have been coming back. People come back <laughs> and keep reworking themes. And I know because of yes. the life between lives work, if you, if people do past life regressions, mm -hmm. they know they keep reincarnating with the same soul group and not, I mean, you know, similar members, same members from their soul group to keep working out the different aspects of these themes together. But if, Hey, if we can forgive and heal while we're still in a body, as if what we do on the other side, why don't we do it here in this same lifetime? I was telling my twin flame, the one that's the last, the walk-in one, he and I are just friends, but uh, we talk about these kinds of things. And I said to him, cause we've had fights and I said to him, you know, I just, I've told myself, I'm never going to talk to him again. And then I told him, I always end up talking to him again. And I said, you know what? I told him this concept. I said, we, when we go to the other side, we're reviewing our life and we're laughing about it. We're saying, oh my gosh, you did this to me. I did that to you, but we forgive each other. I said, why don't we just do that while we're alive? I forgive right. you. There's nothing to forgive if what we can do while we're in a body. Right. I love that. Yeah. yeah that's, that's beautiful. I interviewed a, a woman on this, on, on my channel here, um, who actually did her, uh, life review while in the body. She just decided she wanted to do her life review and she started from uh, as far back as she could remember as a child. And, and she journaled it. She journaled all her, um, inspirations and, and experiences and things like that and um, worked on what she could do to help make amends kind of thing and whatever it took whatever it was and, and of course her higher self was working with her and it wasn't that while she was doing that she had a, a huge transformational experience which could be akin to an NDE while she was driving her car and she was just outside her body while she's driving her car but spirit took the wheel <laughs> Jesus take the wheel right and took the wheel while she was in her car and was the way she described it she wrote a book about it, is um sitting in the back seat 
while she's going through this transformational experience, which was amazing. And, um, but she did her life review while in the body. So I, and I'm sure you know this too, is that the more we know here, the more we know when we leave our physical, physical life. Because we take our awareness, we take our knowledge, we take all that with us. And some people think, oh, well, isn't it, you know, and I think that a lot of times we've been uh, maybe duped into thinking that as soon as we die, we ha know everything. I mean, everyone's different, but I believe it, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said for what we know here. Wow. So, okay. I'm you're expanding my thinking a lot because it does feel, doesn't it feel like we know so much while we're there and maybe what we know down here is kind of insignificant, but you're, you're kind of making it a bit more significant that we really, I mean, obviously that's why we come to live a life, right? To learn. So we really are, our experiences here are very rich and valuable and do bring a lot of information to the other side. It's something we don't necessarily think about that much. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, this can't be a waste of time. No. A waste of, you know, and it can't be, I mean, we're here to experience, right. And, and gather as much as we can uh, and do as much healing as we can help others like law of one. And I remember this, um, the law of one, the, the quote, which sticks with me all the time uh, in forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of karma that says everything <laughs> that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. that's why i was saying we don't necessarily know the rules about coming back but what i was gonna say was exactly that which is if we can heal it all while we're right. here we don't why would we come back you know exactly why would we come back to this dense reality now i i believe that i've made a commitment to work with the planet with humanity until we're all you know, ascended kind of thing. Wow, so <laughs> you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> I guess so. I just have to keep changing avatar bodies. So <laughs> I think a lot of us have, have done that, made that commitment. That's a, that's a big commitment. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel it in my bones that I have that because I feel like, I feel like I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, yeah, almost, I, I feel that we're done with this density. Does that make sense with this um, 3D? Yeah, and so I kind of feel in our lifetime, things are going to, um, I mean, things are already moving up in frequency, right? That's why we're going through such kind of a chaotic time because the, the shadows are being uh, shown. <laughs> the light is being sh shown on the shadows of humanity because as we do our work humanity follows well now that you bring that up i did have two dreams that do talk about or show this so i can share those if you would like yes please but i also want to say that or ask have you I mean, you, if you want to get into it, you can or, or not, obviously you're, um, you can decide, but have you had those kinds of visions or dreams also that show you the shift, um, that's going to happen on the planet? Yes. Yeah. It started 20 years ago, but the timeline has changed. It's gotten a lot better because 20 years ago, it didn't look good, but, um, Okay. But wow. What I've got oh. is this is changed and it looks much, much, much better. Oh, good. Because there we go. Okay. So in about, I don't know the year 2010, I don't, I don't know when, but it, around 2010, we could say I had a dream that I was, there are two dreams. One was I was walking I was walking on a very wide bridge and it was white and it was way above earth. And I was, we were, the people who were walking, we were walking home and the people who were walking on the bridge were, we were separated. We weren't together. We weren't, it was just people walking forward. Nobody was carrying any luggage. And the feeling was 
overwhelming relief that we were leaving the earth plane. We were leaving earth. We were walking home on this white bridge. I could see earth down below and the feeling of relief was so profound. The feeling of just joy and, and peace and calm and nobody was talking to each other. We didn't know each other. We we're just random strangers just on this bridge walking home. And I looked down at earth and I thought, and it was pretty far down there. And I thought to myself, they didn't make it. Uh, it's such a, it's such a heavy, terrible feeling that it was at least 70% or more of the people on earth didn't make it. Meaning they had to keep incarnating over and over right. again, but we, right. we were done. Whoever we were, whoever was walking on this bridge, we were complete and finished with the earth cycles of life on earth. And the, the, the reason they didn't make it was like they just didn't wake up mm -hmm. um to some level of awareness and so that was one dream it was profound one of the most profound dreams i've ever had the other one was earlier it was maybe 2007 or 8 or some 9 something like that this dream was in my dream i i was sleeping and i woke up in the morning and when i woke up i was on I would say was another earth and the old earth was nothing. You couldn't remember it. It was gone. And I will tell you the whole dream, but I'm going to say whatever this whole dream was, I, I read about it later in the Bible. Like it was literally <laughs> word for word in the Bible. I don't know where, cause I'm not a Bible person, but it's, I love parts of the Bible, but I've never really read it. So it, it says something like, your old bodies will be your, you know, your bodies will be perfected and the, the old earth will be no more and will be forgotten. So anyway, this is what I didn't know about that. It was in the Bible until later, but my dream, I woke up, I was in a new place and the old world was gone. And I was in this new world and it was, I was living in a dwelling I think by myself and all the, these dwellings were like lined up and it was all the women. And I stepped outside. It was morning time it was sunny. It was, I stepped out onto the grass. It was nature outside, just nature. And I, and all of these women were outside and I walked up to each women, woman. These women were beautiful they were all feminine. They were all wearing dresses and they all had long hair. But I knew each one of them, even though they didn't look anything like the people that I knew in this life, I still knew who they were based on their frequency or their soul Person. energy. Even though I'm telling you, they didn't look like anything they did before. We had completely different bodies. And I walked up to each woman and I looked at her face and I said, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Cause I'm seeing them for the first time in these new bodies. And then I go up to the next one. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Like just astonished by their beauty. And I went, I greeted each one the same way. And then we all stood in a circle and our arm, we were linked. We wrapped our arms around each other at the waist. And we were standing in a circle again, like I said, every woman was feminine, wearing a dress, long hair and tall. And the reason why I'm telling you, we wrapped our arm, like we were all linked and held each other by the, around the waist is because there was no body fat on the bodies. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for those days. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Everyone was le tall and lean and, um, so we had completely new bodies and that was my dream. And I, and I didn't know where the men were, but just a feeling was that, and I, there were all these, like, like I said, dwellings, we had our own little home and it was all set in nature. There were no buildings, no technology, nothing like that. And, um, I was just feeling like the men were over there on the other side and they had their own dwellings, but I didn't see it. I didn't know it, but I can only imagine. So that, and so that was my dream. And it was also one of the most profound dreams I've ever had. Oh, wow. That's amazing. 
<laughs> yeah. That that is amazing. I've had uh, recently. I've had visions in my meditations, or um, not so much dreams. I don't remember dreams too much with that. Uh, but I do have. I've had really profound visions, and I and also in a hypnosis session. I was getting a hypnosis session where I'm looking down at Earth. Uh, well, I know it's Earth, <clears throat> and. And one of them, Yeshua, Jesus is standing next to me. And uh, and I see that the earth is in uh, beautiful. Just, I mean, the the colors are bright. I know that it's, the frequency is high. And I see so much nature. I see green and, and um, uh, beautiful uh, colors of flowers and things like that and plants. And the architecture, now I do see buildings, but the architecture is so soft and rounded. And um, uh, I'm not going to say crystalline, but kind of glass-like, okay? And um, just really soft looking, and there's not a lot of it. And there's not a lot of people either, but people are walking around, and they're wearing flowing um clothing like a dress or, or trousers that are flowing um, and everyone everyone is um, really uh, loving toward each other you could feel and see and feel that um, frequency with each other and when people interact and they talk to each other you know as they're passing by and say hello how are you that kind of thing you know how um, just the, that kindness and compassion and everything that we that's innate within all of us. It just it gets covered up, and I um, and I was tears were streaming down because I felt so much love and and um, joy from seeing, and I got the strong um, in, intuition, the impression from Yeshua that this is what we have to look forward to. Wow, that is profound and amazing. Yeah. It's like bringing heaven to mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and I've had uh, a couple of visions like that, two or three visions in uh, meditation where, and I'm also, um, and there's something about the women too. I remember I, I have my own little cottage kind of thing where I live and it's you know, and it's, and I'm there, um, by my, in, in my home and, um, just me, and it's a little cottage type of thing. And, and a friend might come over and we sit there and, you know, and drink tea and talk about important stuff for this to us. But, um, but there's this feeling of, um, uh, no worry, no pressure, no, you know, nothing that is weighing heavy on us. We're, we're just living in that, um, space of connection and beauty and uh feeling really good yeah. that sounds exactly like the what it was like what I just described that what you just said and it was this dwelling it was like a cottage and it was like very rounded at the, yes. at the roof but it wasn't uh glass it was more of a natural materials but we each had our own so that was really, and they were all like next to each other. Wow. Um, yeah, that's. And like you said, no worries, just pure joy and love and connection. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that day. <laughs> There's parts of the earth like that now. Yeah. There are. So we can do that. We can, we can move into that space. That's true. I guess we're doing it as we speak. I hope so. <laughs> right. <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. This has been amazing. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And do, would you mind sharing your uh, contact information, website, and there, anything that you would like to share? So, and I'll, we'll have it in the details, but um, if you don't mind sharing that. Okay. So, my uh, website is stephaniecraft.com. And the other one is radiantsunbotanicals.com. And then I'm on YouTube and it's, you can just find me. My channel name is Stephanie Craft. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All righty. Do you have any 
final words of wisdom you'd like to share with everyone? Um, you know, something just popped up into my mind. It's not words of wisdom. Maybe I'll, maybe that will pop up at two, but I, and this is kind of like a, a pitch, but not really. Cause I don't, I'm not a sales person, but there is a device on my website called iTeraCare and it has been the most miraculous healing device I've ever seen in my life. And I've never used another one, but I mean, it's creating miracles people and you know we're not really allowed to say too much because you're not allowed to say something heals you right because right. you get in trouble right. but um anyway it's called itera care it uses terahertz frequency it's on my website i do sell them that's the only way you can buy them is through people but i'm sharing this because people like us tend to be very drawn to it because i mean it works and people who hear about it it's a frequency thing as soon as oh. i heard about it my intuition was screaming yes so anyway, I felt like mentioning that because people are, if they have any, people are healing from stage big C, you know what I'm talking about? All I kinds, it. I believe it. All, everything you could ever imagine, people are getting totally fixed. Wow. I'm okay. going to say this. Yeah. Yeah. All words. But yeah, feeling, but yeah, feeling much better. So it's called Itera Care. I, yes. I, okay. Is yes. it is it like a, is it a wand? It's or? like a wand, okay. and it, it has a terahertz light coming out. It uses scalar wave uh, technology, terahertz, and um, quartz. Uh, it's called optical quartz. Those three main are the three main technologies in it, but it's like nothing anybody's ever seen before it's a relatively new product it's been uh, out on the market maybe a year and a half maybe mm, two okay wow so, um does it have I've personally miracle healings with it myself oh wow okay does it have any um light i mean like light therapy? Yeah, it has a blue it has a blue light coming out but that they say that's just to show you where it's oh, okay. hitting you but it it um but it's the terahertz frequency oh, wow. okay yeah. oh nice i'll have to check that out thank you for sharing that yeah, yeah you're <laughs> anything else you'd like to share before we close i think that's it i feel pretty complete thank you for letting me share so much oh of course yeah we'll have to come back you'll have to come back so we can talk some more i'm sure we have lots to more to talk about <laughs> oh for <sure>. definitely <laughs> okay okay and thank you everyone for watching and um please subscribe like you know all that youtube stuff helps us out and we'll see you again soon thank you stephanie thank you bye bye